following video is video that I shot earlier this year, late spring, early summer. This is uh, right after I had received my engine and um, I started working on getting the baffling done. So uh, content is about six months old. Uh, however, this is kind of where I'm picking up. I took a break over the summer and uh, I had all this stuff already in the can and I'm just now getting to editing it. So this episode is gonna be engine baffling. I've got a little bit more on the engine after this episode. Uh, that I'll be editing soon for the next episode. And then soon will be some new content. Uh, I'll be showing uh, the wingtips that I'll be working on, as well as avionics. Uh, the fuselage is currently out at the avionics shop right now. And I've decided I'm not going to tackle the avionics myself. I'm just going to have a professional do it. Uh, I'll talk more about that in the avionics episode. But that comes back to me in a few weeks. And then I'm getting back hard on the project. But in the meantime, Enjoy the engine baffling episode. Well, I got the engine hoisted up for right now, setting it's still on its base of the crate, setting on my table here. Use my engine hoist. Um, what I want to do, I don't want it sitting on the crate while I do the work. It, it's just sitting up a little too high, and this is just kind of bulking in the way. I can't take it off the crate and set it down just on its supports because. These are not boxed in. This, this bottom of the crate is actually kind of creating a structure to do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this angle I have, I'm gonna weld it to this support, and then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna weld another one back here and hold those together. And then I'm just gonna join these together. And that's gonna basically create a frame or a box that then I can unbolt everything from the crate base, hoist it up, get that out of the way and set it down on the table. Really just for getting it a little bit lower and just getting this clutter up out of the way. All right, here's what I got. It's kind of, you know, hokey, I guess is the word. I mean, it's, it's plenty strong enough. It's just kind of using some scrap, some angle iron here, angle here. I didn't have any more angle, so I just used a piece of uh, rectangular box section here, uh, pretty heavy wall. And just welded this square up, welded it to these. So now, in theory, I can go ahead and hoist this thing up, undo all these bolts, slide this out, and this should just set down and nothing should squat or it should just be kind of self-supporting at this point. That did it. Got the weight off and it's just sitting on that framework there. That gets it down about, I don't know, six inches, a little more respectable height for me to work on it. Um, I suppose I could have found there maybe a shorter workbench or something, but I just, I wanted to keep it on this table here. So there we go. Um, that's good. Maybe something y'all can do if you kind of want to do a similar arrangement. I suppose, geez, I'm just sitting here thinking. I could have maybe welded some caster wheels either here or at the corners or something and set it on the floor and then I could wheel it around and work on it. Hmm. I don't know. For now, this will work. Got the ignition coils mounted up on top of the engine here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The, they give you some uh, tubing to make these spacers on your own. I just thought it was easier. I just ordered these up from McMaster in approximately the lengths. They're plus or minus a 16th inch from what they should be. That way I didn't have to cut them down and turn them on the lathe or whatever. Um, so I got those on there. Um, I do know that I'm going to have to kind of undo all this when it comes time to mount the engine uh, to the mount to get access to this nut here. But I wanted to get this in place so I could get the fuel line um, bent out of the way. It normally kind of comes over here and you have to kind of move this out of the way. Uh, I'm, I just, you know, carefully bent it. I'm not really happy with, with it. It's, it's far too long. Um, it kind of has to take up take up some space here and then some space here. I'd really love it if I could have a line that came here, did a nice straight shot to here and then over to the injector. I don't know, maybe I can, I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna make one, but then I started looking and it looks like they solder in um, a sleeve or something in the end. This is, doesn't seem to be a typical just flared end. So I don't know, I'll look into that. Maybe I'll make one, maybe I won't. <laughs> In any case, this is done. So next I want to um, start working on the side pieces of the baffle, left and right sides. Um, 
and then I believe I'll work on the back. There's a lot of baffle pieces here. <laughs> Got them all primed, ready to go. There's just so many pieces. It's crazy. So, all right, well, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Well, I've got my baffling pretty much done. Uh, this total time involved here was probably about eight hours. Not too bad. I was a little intimidated when I started or when I was thinking about starting because of just the number of pieces. And the manual isn't as clear with the drawings and the text as it is in other parts of the build. Um, so there is just a little bit of thinking involved, but pretty much all the parts, I mean, they're all diagrammed out and it all is fairly intuitive. Um, so um, one deviation I did from the plans is they call for riveting this angle brace to rivet this piece to this piece. And of course this piece is riveted to this piece. So this would all be one piece and you can't really remove it uh, later if you do that. So you kind of would assemble it in and rivet it in place. And I don't like that. I like the ability, the ability to uh, remove the pieces. So I, instead of using rivets here, I use 632s and some Tinderman clips. And that way I can remove this piece separately. So I deviated from the uh, manual there. Um, everywhere else, I pretty much went according to the manual. I did change these out for hex heads instead of the supplied uh, flat blade. Just easier using a uh, Allen uh, Allen head with a with a with a drill. Um, so I did change those out. Um, everything fit really well. Didn't really have any issues. Um, of course, you can see I've primed everything. So I primed all the pieces separately first, assembled the baffling, and then I went in and took it all apart and, and reprimed it again. And the reason for that was just to get all of the rivet heads, all of the angle braces that I, I hadn't primed in this course. You know, these are fabricated from stock while you're doing this. So I didn't have those primed or anything. So I just went ahead and hit the whole thing with primer again just to even out all the color. Of course, this ended up getting primed. This was the 3D printed piece for the um, uh, oil cooler. So all in all, um, pretty easy install. Um, yeah, no, no real complaints anywhere. Oh, one thing, <laughs> it's kind of funny. So this piece here, I have seen this in other builder videos. For some reason, Rands includes an extra one of these that does not get used. It's, it's this piece here. I've seen other videos make the same claim that they end up with this piece. And we're talking videos that are several years old and Rand still hasn't um, changed that and they still give you this. So if you're wondering why you have a part left over, which I initially was, and then I remembered, ah, I think I remember seeing a video where those were, where that was an extra piece and sure enough it was. So they're not quick to update things. <laughs> I'd be surprised in five years if they're, they're probably still including that piece. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention, um, I had to flip the rivets around here because it's super tight against the cylinder head cooling fins. So I wanted to use the um, other side of the rivets, the shallower side on there. And I think I did the same thing um, over here. It got a little close. So again, it's just, in, just intuitive. Just look at, you know, you just kind of look at what you're doing and when it all makes sense, you're probably doing it right. <laughs> so there we go. Um, what I have to do now is I've got to change this out with the 90 that they include. I have to add a oil, um, pressure and oil temperature, oil pressure port. I forget where it goes. I'll have to look at somewhere over here, uh, oil temperature. And then, um, I can do this anytime, but that's a manifold, uh, pressure port. So I need to get those on because that's a little difficult to do after the engine is mounted up uh, to the engine mount on the firewall. So all in all, baffling is not as intimidating as it in I initially thought it was going to be. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, down here, so on these, they have you safety, just run a piece of safety wire from from this cooling or this baffle here underneath the uh, cooling fins comes across and you run a safety wire in here 
you can kind of see. I put the rivets in there like, like other builders are doing and then knock out the uh, stem. Just adds a little extra structure there to the, to the piece so it, over time it maybe is a less chance of wearing through. I'm gonna show here on the uh, cylinder baffles. I'm not using um, safety wire. I'm using some 16th inch stainless steel cable and I'm crimping a cable stop ferrule using a pair of flat jaw Nipex pliers. That's what you see going on back there. And, uh, and I'm doing springs up here and these uh, base nuts and then crimping on the cable stop ferrule here. Um, got this idea, well, this is similar to how uh, on a Continental O200 some of the inner cylinder baffles go. I thought, well, that seems a little better than uh, safety wire. Is it? I don't know. But that's what I'm going to try for a while at least. Um, and what's nice is you get constant tension uh, with the springs there, uh, even under temperature changes. How long will it hold up this way? I don't know. But uh, like I say, it is something I'm going to try. I got these parts at McMaster. These are 832 base nuts. I'm just using that as, a, as an end for the spring. These springs provide about four pounds of tension at their maximum compression. A little stiffer wouldn't be bad, but it's kind of hard to find the diameter such that everything just kind of worked. So anyways, if you want to try something different, you can do this. And honestly, even if you didn't want to do the springs, um, just using the cable and the ferrules um, would probably work really well too. There you go. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this engine mounted up. I've got the firewall stuff done enough. I mean, it's like, where do you stop? At some point, you gotta mount the engine. There's gonna be things I have to do here after the fact, but I kinda like, kind of at a phase where I wanna get the engine on so I can, I need to know where I wanna put, I'm probably gonna put a firewall pass through here for like my power, my battery cable, uh, alternator, cable like i just i want the engine on here i guess is what i'm saying so i think i'll hang it worst case scenario i'm like man i really shouldn't have put it on yet because i need to i don't know get in and do something else i can always pull it off so i think i'm gonna do this i'm gonna try to do this by myself I'm just kind of by myself here today um i'll get the engine hoist over lift this thing up take off this rack wheel it over well, I'm going to pick up the tail so that it's sitting more level. And I'll just set it up on a stand back there. And I'll wheel it over and I think I can kind of orient it. If I can at least get the top two bolts in and it can just kind of sit there, then I can kind of finagle and move it around and get the others in. Or I might find that I just can't do this by myself and I'm going to need an extra set of hands. <laughs> There's an engine on my airplane. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, it seemed like this day was never gonna happen. Man, this is, this is, this reminds me of when I, when I put the tail cone on. No, it was when I finished skinning the top skins of the tail cone and I had like finished the tail cone off and it actually, and it was just sitting there and it was like actually looking like a fuselage. 
I remember that day. It's, it's in that episode towards the end where I was just like, oh my God, that's the feeling I have right now. I've got the engine hung. <laughs> I've got the engine hung on my airplane and it is so exciting. This is a little over a year I've been waiting for this to, to get to this stage where I'm truly at firewall forward. Let's have a look at it over here. There we go. <laughs> look at that. I've got it sitting up on a, on a um, stool back there. I did check the weight. I didn't want to let the engine hoist up and then have it nose over. So I checked it. It's all good. I'm going to go ahead and get it sitting on its tail wheel now. But um, <laughs> I got the engine on. The tool of choice for this, as many other builders had discovered, and myself as well, this offset wrench, 5 8 that you have to grind down. I had to really thin it out, both around its circumference and its thickness, to allow me to, pretty much they're easy to get to, except for this one back here, number four. It's really close to the push rod tube. It's really tight getting this in there, but. Once you grind that tool down, you can get in there no problem. I used just a regular opened end wrench down on this one, and I came back with the offset tool uh, back in here for this one. So not terribly bad, and not terribly bad to hang this by myself. Um, it took, I don't know, five minutes. So hopefully I don't have to take it off again. It's not terrible to do, but I would prefer not to. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. We got the engine baffling and I went ahead and threw in a little bit of mounting up the engine on the firewall. Uh, it looks like I've got some enough clips to do another episode of just basic like firewall forward stuff. I'm not taking the time to do to show like every little thing I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm just doing a bunch of work. And then once I've got things done, I'm coming back and I'm just kind of showing what I did. Um, I've got enough of that to kind of show like a firewall forward episode, I guess, where I show most of what I've done um, on, you know, mounting up all the sensors, hoses and things like that. Um, and then I think we'll be able to get on to um, avionics. And then, like I said earlier, at the beginning of the video, wingtip and some other things. But for now, that's going to wrap it up. Hey, thanks for watching.